first grew up uh, listening to the radio and listening to Texas Daisy and Texas Ruby, Patsy Montana and uh, the Carter family, uh, Sarah and Maybelle Carter, and uh, there weren't too many m girls in the business at the time, and that was about the, you know, stint of the women in the country field. The first woman star I ever remember hearing was uh, Kitty Wells singing Honky Tonk Angel. I remember seeing pictures of her and seeing her on television shows and stuff, and she played guitar. That was the separator between um, women that sang other kinds of music and, and country music. The girl singers in country music took up a guitar and played just like a man would play for himself. World War II came along, and the big dance halls came up. And all big bands, western swing bands like that, was making a killing at country music. I was in the honky tonk era, along with Kitty Wells and Rose Maddox. Back in my uh, heyday, there was no room to be a wimp. You had to stand up for what you, you know, and kind of fight for what we got. Honky tonk scene was, well, it got a little raunchy at times. Most of the time, let's put it that way. But you had to work them because the working people all went to honky tonks. Ain't gonna wash my face for a month, and that could be a sign. But I'll be saving a lot of soap if you forget last night. Anything that doggone good has just gotta be right. Ain't gonna wash my face for a month because you kissed me last night. When I think back about the traveling, it scares me to think how many miles we made in such short times. We just had two-lane highways. We didn't have the super highways and rode in automobiles. And a lot of times, you know, you had the big bass fiddle right in, inside the car, and you had, had to ride with that around you. And with that bass fiddle sticking over my neck, with my head bent over this way, you know, and. Uh, so much so, really, that I developed arthritis because I had to ride all these miles, you know, riding that hump in that station wagon. The girls nowadays, they got a lot of be better ways to travel, like in the buses and got super highways, and uh, it makes it a lot nicer. But some of them, I don't believe, will have the stamina that some of us artists had when we first started out. The beautiful Tennessee Wall. When Patti Page sang the Tennessee Waltz, she pointed the way to a whole new style in country music. By the 1950s, they had called it the Nashville Sound. It was smooth and it was sweet. It was a perfect blend of, of uh, pop music arrangements and the great country music lyrics. And I'd rather be the one you slip around with than be the one To me, the Nashville sound was the musicians, the spontaneity of them all getting together in the studio. The musicians should be credited with that sound and great producers like Owen Bradley. Country was making that transition from, quote, hillbilly for so long, you know, which men fit into that role, I think, better than women. When I came here, first of all, I had to write for men because men were your basic artists. We were told that uh, songwriting was a closed operation. You're not going to get in. The boys won't let you in. And um, I thought, baloney. Women weren't supposed to know anything about the business. Women weren't supposed to have that many artistic ideas. There were probably a lot of great women's songs floating around, but they didn't have the right connections to get anywhere. We were told women didn't sell. And I, I couldn't believe it then, because uh, there was Peggy Lee, there was uh, Patty Page, there was Joni James. What are they talking about? Probably the woman who embodied the Nashville sound more than anyone was Patsy Cline, absolutely.
cry and the catch in the voice was genuine and it was part of her deal. You believed what she sang. You believed the emotion that she was talking about. Uh, she had a style that was all her own, still is. She could sing it country. She could sing it pop. She could yodel. She could do anything with her voice she wanted to and do it perfection. One night, I had just finished listening to her sing, and I went in to change clothes, and the door flew open, and in walked Patsy. And she had on this cowgirl outfit with the fringe and the boots, and stood there with her hands on her hips, and she said, well, you're a conceited little SOB. You just waltz in here and do your spot and do your song and waltz out. And she says, you don't say hello, kiss my foot or anything to anybody. And uh, I said, now, wait just a minute. When a newcomer comes to town, it's the people that live there that make them feel welcome. They're not damn soul made me feel welcome here. And boy, she backed up and she laughed. When she laughed, she laughed from here, you know, all the way up and you could hear her a block away. She says, you know, you all right, honey. I said, anybody, anybody that'll talk back to the client is all right. She says, and we're gonna be good friends. 